So we can begin tonight, Arjuna? Yes, yes, Guru. All right. Om Magyana Timarandasya Recording in progress. Shalakaya Chatsurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Panchakaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Pai Hevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Krishna book and we're reading that we're up to chapter number uh, 60 where it's entitled Krishna Tizis Rukmini and so Lord Krishna enjoys uh, his dealings with his different wives and his principal wife is Rukmini. And we're hearing about Lord Krishna's joking words with Rukmini. He is uh, anxious, he wants to see if he can disturb her and make her a little angry. Lord Krishna knew that Sancha Bama sometimes gets a little jealous or a little, uh, a little upset if Rukmini has something which she hasn't. So be because Rukmini got the Parijata flower, Lord Krishna took Satyabhama to heaven and let her get a whole Parijata tree. So Lord Krishna wanted to, he thought maybe Rukmini would be jealous that now Satyabhama has a whole tree and she only had a flower. He thought maybe Rukmini would be asking for something more. So Lord Krishna was thinking how to... But actually, Rukmini didn't, didn't want anything. She was completely happy in herself. She was just happy to serve Krishna. So Krishna began to think how he could make her a little disturbed and angry. He wanted to see her a little upset. You know, sometimes a husband will say, oh, my wife looks more beautiful when she's angry. So Lord Krishna is uh, telling Rukmini, he begins by telling Rukmini that, yeah, he tells Rukmini that actually I'm not a very good husband for you. And at the time I married you, I kidnapped you. You were supposed to marry another person who was a king. His name was Sishupala. And your father and your brother, they'd already agreed that you could get married to Sishupao and the whole marriage was arranged. So 
And I came there and I kidnapped you just at the time when you were supposed to marry him. But if you had married him, you know, he was so lusty, he was so eager to enjoy your beauty that if you had married him, he would always have been your faithful servant. So Lord Krishna tells Rukmini, he said, in comparison to Sishupal, I'm nothing. I, I, uh, uh, Sishupal was much better, much greater personality than I am. And Krishna tells Rukmini, I think you can personally realize this. And Krishna said, I'm just surprised you gave up that marriage to Sishupal and you accepted me, although I'm inferior in comparison to him. I think Krishna said, I think I'm 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 not, I'm not worthy to be your husband. You're so beautiful and you're so sober and you're so grave, you're such a great personality. So Krishna, why why did you accept me? Krishna said, I, I may I, I may call you my beautiful wife, but still I may inform you of my actual position that I am I'm inferior to all those other princesses who wanted to marry you. Other princes who wanted to marry you. Yeah, there were many kings who wanted to marry you, not only Sishupal, they were all mad after you. And Krishna said, you, for, you should know, I was, so, I was so afraid of Jarasandha that I could not dare to live on the land. And that's why I had to construct my house within the sea. I don't need to tell this to others, it's a secret, so I don't need, I don't need to tell the secret to others, but you should know that I am not very heroic. I am a coward and I'm afraid of my enemies. Still, I am not safe. All the great kings of the land are enemies to me. And I'm, I created this bad feeling by fighting with them in many ways. And then another thing is I'm on the throne of, I am, I am on the throne of Dwarka. But I have no, I have no real claim to the throne. 
ตัวประค่าเนี่ยได้รับราชบัลลังก์อยู่บนบัลลังก์ของดารกาแต่อ้างสิทธิ์ไม่ได้ I got the kingdom I got my kingdom by killing my maternal uncle Kamsa ข้าเนี่ยได้รับราชอาณาจักรได้ของราชมาเนื่องจากข้าได้สังหารเสด็จลุงคำสัก And the kingdom was to go to my grandfather so actually I have no possession of a kingdom แล้วก็ราชอาณาจักรนี้เนี่ยมันต้องไปกับพระอายการของข้าโดยธรรมชาติแล้วข้าไม่มีสิทธิ์ในในรับสมบัตินี้ And Krishna said I have I have no fixed aim in life ราคาเนี่ยก็ไม่มีจุดมุ่งหมายของชีวิตที่แน่นอน People cannot understand me very well ผู้คนเนี่ยไม่สามารถที่จะเข้าใจข้าได้ What is what is the ultimate goal of my life They What is the ultimate goal of my life ว่าจุดมุ่งหมายสูงสุดของชีวิตข้าคืออะไร People other people know That I was a cowherd boy in Vrindavan. And people expected; they all thought I would follow my father, Nanda Maharaj. And they all thought I'd be faithful to s r i m a t i Radharani and all her friends in Vrindavan. But all of a sudden, I left them. I wanted to become a famous prince. But I could not have any kingdom, nor could I rule. I couldn't be a prince either. <coughs> แต่ว่าข้าเนี่ยไม่มีราชอาณาจักรหลักข้าก็ไม่สามารถที่จะครองเมืองเป็นเจ้าชายได้ด้วย So people are bewildered about my real goal of life. ดังนั้นผู้คนเนี่ยจึงเกิดความสับสนเกี่ยวกับจุดมุ่งหมายที่แท้จริงของชีวิต They don't know if I'm a cowherd boy or a prince. พวกเขาไม่รู้ว่าข้าเนี่ยเป็นเด็กเลี้ยงวัวหรือว่าเป็นเจ้าชาย They don't know if I'm the son of Nanda Maharaj or the son of Vasudev. And because I have no aim in life, people call me a vagabond. So I'm just surprised that you would select a vagabond like me to be your vagabond husband. ถ้าแปลกใจว่าเธอเนี่ยมาเลือกสามีเป็นคนจรจัดอย่างนี้ได้ And besides that I'm not very much polished นอกจากนี้เนี่ยข้าก็ไม่ได้พัฒนาเท่าไรมากมาเกี่ยวกับมารยาทางสังคม I don't know social etiquette ข้าไม่ค่อยรู้เกี่ยวกับมารยาทางสังคมมากนะ A person should be satisfied with one wife But you see, I have married many times. I, I have s i x t e e wives. I cannot please all of them as a as a good husband. ทั้งหมดเนี่ยพึงพอใจในฐานะที่เป็นสามีที่ดีได้ My behavior with them is not very nice ความประพฤติของข้าต่อพวกเขาว่าพวกนางเนี่ยไม่ค่อยดีมากนะ And you must be very conscious you, you must know this พวกเธอเธอเนี่ยควรที่จะรู้ตรงนี้แต่รู้ And I create a situation with my wives which is not very happy นะคะก็สร้างสถานการณ์กับภรรยาสร้างเหตุการณ์ให้ภรรยาเนี่ยไม่ค่อยมีความสุขมากนะ I was brought up in a village in my childhood so I'm not well acquainted with the proper behavior of urban life living in the town or city 
ถ้าเนี่ยได้ใช้ชีวิตในตอนเด็กในต่างจังหวัดเพราะฉะนั้นถ้าไม่ค่อยรู้ถึงมารยาทของชีวิตในเมืองมากนะ I don't know how to please a wife with nice words and behavior ถ้าไม่รู้ว่าจะทำให้ภรรยาเนี่ยมีความสุขแล้วก็พึงพอใจได้ So I found that any woman who follows my way or becomes attracted by me is left to cry for the rest of her life. In Vrindavan, many gopis. Were attracted by me, attracted to me, and now I have left them, and they are living, but are simply crying for me in separation. บอกว่าที่บรินดาวันเนี่ยก็มีพวกบูปีมากมายที่หลงรักค่าแล้วก็บัดนี้เนี่ยพวกเขาพวกนางเนี่ยก็ยังมีชีวิตอยู่แต่ก็ร้องไห้ดูก่อน So I have heard from them. From Akrura, I've heard from Akrura and Udava that since I left Vrindavan, all my cowherd boyfriends and the Gopis and Radharani, and my foster father Nanda Maharaj, they're simply crying all the time for me. พวกโปีพวกรารรานีหรือว่าพวกเอ่อพ่อเลี้ยงนันดามาราทุกคนเนี่ยก็ร้องไห้เพราะคิดถึงค่าอยู่ตลอด Krishna says I left Vrindavan for good and now I'm in, I'm living with the queens in Dwarka แล้วก็บอกว่าค่าเนี่ยก็เอ่อจากวรินดาวันมาแล้วก็ค่าตอนนี้ก็อยู่กับเจ้าหญิงที่เอ่อที่ดวาริกา But I don't know how to behave properly with all of you. So you can understand easily that I have no. I'm not. I'm not a steady character. I'm very unsteady. So I'm not a I'm not a reliable husband, and the the result of being attracted to me is to acquire a life of just sorrow and sadness only. My dear beautiful Krishna sister Rukmini, my dear beautiful princess, you may also know that I have, I'm penniless. I have no money. Just, just after my birth, I was carried without any money. To the house of Nanda Maharaj, and I was raised just like a cowherd boy. So my foster father Nanda Maharaj, he owned many hundreds of thousands of cows. But I was not the owner of even one of the cows. I was simply given to him to take care. I was, he, I was, I, I was simply given the job of taking care of the cows. I wasn't given the ownership of any cows. They all belonged to Nanda Maharaj. So here in Dwarka, I am not the proprietor of anything. I don't own anything. I always have no money. 
เดี๋ยวก็เช่นกันค่าไม่ค่าไม่ได้เป็นเจ้าของของอะไรเลยค่าแทบจะไม่มีเงิน So there's no, you don't have any reason to lament for somebody like me who has no money. And Krishna said, "I I didn't own anything in the past, so why should I lament that I am not owning anything now?" And you should know also that my devotees are not very opulent; they are also very poor. And but pet people who are very rich, who have a lot of material wealth. Are not interested in devotion to me. They're not interested in Krishna consciousness. Now, if somebody becomes If somebody loses all their money, maybe by force or just by some unfortunate circumstance, then he may become interested in me. He may become interested in Krishna consciousness. But people who are proud of their riches, even if they are offered association with my devotees, they don't want it. So. People who are poor, the poorer section of the society, they may have some interest in me in Krishna consciousness, but rich men have no interest in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> So I think it was not very intelligent of you to select me to be your husband. But at the same time, you you appear, you look intelligent, and you were trained by your father and your brother, but you made a great mistake to select. Me as your life's companion. But Krishna said, "It doesn't anyway. There's no harm. The mistake can be corrected." And it's, it's better to correct it now. Better late than never. You know, if you correct it now, it's better. You, better you do correct it now rather than just leave it. And you're free. You can select another husband who is suitable and equal to you. In opulence, somebody who has a good family, who has some wealth, who has some beauty and education, find select a man qualified to be your husband. And the mistake you made in marrying me that can be forgotten. And 
so you should you should make your own make your own path of life the what what you want to do with your life when a person wants to get married uh, get a, 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 a relationship in marriage then it's it's usually uh, with a person who is equal, who is either higher or lower than his position. Right. It, it does not, he does not make a marriage relationship with someone who's higher or lower than his position. Yeah, they should be equal. They should be about equally educated, equally, they should have about equal money, equal opulence. Mm. And so then the marriage is more, it's more satisfying because they're equal to each other. So Krishna says to Rukmini, he said, Oh, my dear daughter of the king of Vidarbha, I think you did not consider very carefully before your marriage. And you made a you made a bad choice by choosing me as your husband. And you heard about my having a very special character. But actually I'm nothing more than a beggar. It, without without seeing me and without seeing my actual position, you you only heard about me and you selected me as your husband. So that was your mistake. It's not enough just to hear about me from others. You should have seen me for yourself. So I think what you should do, I think you should now select another king, another Kshatriya king to be your husband and accept him as your life's companion, and you can give me up. So Krishna was saying all of this to Ruk Rukmini. He was saying that Rukmini should divorce him at a time when Rukmini and Krishna already had grown up children. So Krishna, what Krishna was saying, it was very, it was not expected. It was totally unexpected, and it was a great shock to Rukmini. So, and definitely in the Vedic culture, 
there's no separation of the husband and wife and there's no divorce. And certainly Rukmini couldn't get a new husband. She's already an older lady with grown-up children. So difficult for her to get married again. So to Rukmini, everything Krishna was saying was just, it just sounded crazy to her. And she'd never heard Krishna speak like this before and she was just amazed. What, what is he saying? So Rukmini is a very, very simple younger, young lady. She's simple and, uh, well, she's not so young, of course, because she had grown-up children. But anyway, she's a simple lady. And so when Krishna said all this, then she became very anxious. She, her anxiety was so great. And... And just the thought of being separate of being separated from Krishna was unbearable to her. Anyway, Krishna is not finished yet, he's still talking to her. And he said, anyway, you, ha you have to prepare yourself for your next life. So Krishna said, I would advise you to select a husband who can help you in both this life and the next life, because I am not able to help you. So Krishna says to his wife, he said, My dear beautiful princess, you know all the great princes. You know Sishupal and Salva. Jarasandha, Dantavakra, and even your elder brother Rukmi. And all of these people are my enemies. They do not like me at all. They hate me. They hate the, from the core of their heart. They hate me. All these princes were very much proud and puffed up with their possessions, and they do not care a fig for anyone who came before them. So Krishna said, I saw how proud they were, so I wanted to teach them a lesson. That's why I agreed to kidnap you. I knew that was your desire. And so I thought, oh, okay, if I kidnap you, then I will, I will make them very angry and I will take away their pride. So Krishna said, actually, I have no love for you. I only 
kidnapped you to make them angry. I know you loved me. You loved me before the marriage, but I didn't love you. I have no love for you. And Krishna says to Rukmini, actually, I have, I'm not very much interested in family life or love between husband and wife. I'm not very fond of family life and children and home and opulences. And my devotees also, they also don't take interest in these things. So Krishna said, both my devotees and I were both like that. We don't care about the um, husband, uh, about wife and family and home and opulences. So family life doesn't give me any pleasure, but what, <coughs> give, what does give me pleasure is self-realization. So when Lord Krishna said this, then Lord Krishna stopped. So Sukadeva Goswami said that Krishna almost always passed his time with Rukmini. And Rukmini was a little proud because she was so fortunate that Krishna was always with her. All, nearly all the time. <coughs> but Krishna doesn't like any of his devotees to be proud. <coughs> and when a devotee becomes proud, then Krishna arranges to take away that pride. And then Krishna had also said many things that were very, very painful for Rukmini to hear. So she could only understand that although she was proud of her position, Krishna could leave her at any time, at any moment. Rukmini was conscious that her husband was not an ordinary person. He was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And yeah, he's the master of the three worlds. So he was speaking by the Krishna was speaking in a way that Rukmini was afraid of losing her husband, lo losing, being separated from the Lord, because she had never heard ever Krishna speak words like this before. <laughs> So Rukmini became afraid. She was full, full of fear of separation 
and her heart began to palpitate, her heart began to beat faster. So she didn't even try to reply to Krishna's words. She just simply started to cry in great anxiety. She, she, she began to scratch the floor with her toenails. Her toenails reflected reddish light on the floor. And there were tears from her eyes which mixed with the black cosmetic ointment around her eyes and it dropped down washing the kumkum and saffron from her breasts. And she was in so much anxiety, she was unable to say or even a word. And she kept her head down and she just remained standing like a stick. She felt so much pain and fear and she was so sorry. She lost all her powers and just became weak. And her body lost so much weight that the bangles on her wrist all became slack. And she'd been using the chamara to fan Krishna. But when Krishna spoke in this way, the chamara fell from her hand. And she lost her memory and then she lost all consciousness. Her hair had been nicely combed, but then it, it scattered here and there, and she fell down straight like a banana tree cut down by a wind. So when Rukmini fell down like that, then Krishna immediately understood that Rukmini had taken Krishna's words very seriously. Krishna was actually joking, but Rukmini took them very seriously and she was so worried about separation from him that she just fell unconscious. So Lord Krishna is very kind towards his devotees. So when he saw Rukmini's condition, then his heart became soft. 
ล้วเมื่อกระชาเห็นเช่นนี้แล้วเนี่ยเนี่ยพอพระองค์เนี่ยมีความใจดีมากกับสาวกของพระองค์พอพระองค์เห็นเช่นนี้เนี่ยพระองค์ก็รู้สึกใจออก At once, Krishna became very kind, merciful to her. So the relationship between Rukmini and Krishna is the same like that between Lakshmi and Narayan. So Krishna appeared before Rukmini in his four-handed form as Narayan. So Krishna got down from the bed, and he 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 was he was sitting on the bedstead. So he got down from the bed, and he lift, picked up Rukmini by her hands, and placed his. Cooling hands on her face. And Lord Krishna soothed the the hair on her head, made it. He smoothed it. He made it much. It was all scattered, but Krishna brought it together and made it nice. And the breasts of Rukmini had become all wet, and Lord Krishna dried them for her. So Krishna was really impressed. He saw how serious Rukmini had deep love for him, and he embraced her to his chest. So Lord Krishna is very expert in talking, and he put a thing. He, he, He wants to put the the situation in a nice manner for Rukmini's understanding. So Krishna wanted to take back all that he had actually said, all the things which he'd been saying about her. Krishna wanted to take them back. Krishna is the only resort for all devotees. And Krishna knows how to satisfy his pure devotees. Krishna understood. Rukmini could not follow. The things which he had said in a joking way. Right? Krishna had been telling Rukmini, "You should go get another husband." Of course, Rukmini couldn't do that. So Krishna understood. Now, yeah, Krishna wants to convince Rukmini if he was all a joke, so he's going to speak to her and guide her. So she said, "He Krishna says to Rukmini, he said, 'My dear daughter of King Vidarbha.'" King Vidarbha, Rukmini's father, King Vidarbha. He says, "My dear daughter of King Vidarbha, my dear Rukmini, please do not misunderstand me. Don't be unkind to me." I know you are sincere 
and seriously attached to me. You are my eternal companion. So the words which affected you, actually, they're not really true. I just wanted to make you angry. I wanted to irritate you a bit. And I was expecting that you would reply. I expected you would answer me back. But instead, everything I said, you took it very seriously. So I'm very sorry for it. I thought I thought that your le your red lips would tremble in anger when you heard my my words. I thought you would chastise me with your heart with your words. I never thought that you would say nothing and that you would just faint and collapse to the ground. I thought that you would put your, you would look at me in, in retaliation and that I would I would see your beautiful face in an angry mood, but I didn't. <laughs> you didn't get angry at all. Instead, you just fainted and collapsed to the ground. And so then Krishna tells Rukmini, you should know that we are house we householders, we're always busy in household affairs and long for a time when we can enjoy joking words with each other. This is the way of householder life. Householders will work hard all day and night, but the, 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 when they come home at night, they finish their work. Then as soon as they... Uh, meet together, the husband and wife, they enjoy life with each other. So Lord Krishna wants to tell Rukmini, he wants to try and show himself to be like an ordinary family man who takes pleasure in joking with his wife. So, Krishna is telling Rukmini she should not take Krishna's words very serious. So in this way, Krishna pacified Rukmini by his sweet words. And Rukmini could understand that what he had actually said 
was not actually true. It wasn't, he wasn't being serious, but it was, he was just making some joking words. Krishna wanted some pleasure between him and his wife by saying these words. So when Krishna told her like that, then Rukmini became pacified hearing these words of Krishna. Then she didn't feel so much fear anymore about losing Krishna or being separated from him. And Rukmini began to look at Krishna's face very cheerfully with her smiling face. So Rukmini is now going to reply to Krishna. She, so she says to Krishna, My dear lotus-eyed Lord, your statement that we are not a fit combination is right. Uh, it's, it, it's impossible for me to ever come to an equal level with you. Because you are the reservoir of all qualities. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So how can I be a fit match for you? I cannot compare to you. You are the master of all greatness. You are the controller of all the three qualities. And you're worshipped by all the great demigods like Brahma and Lord Shiva. But Rukmini said, I am a product of the three modes of material nature. And these modes of nature, they stop, they stop the advancement of devotional service. So how could I ever be a fit match for you? And you have said that you have taken shelter in the water of the sea as if you were afraid of the kings. But who are the real kings of this material world? I don't think the, the kings, I don't think the, the royal families are kings of the material world. The real kings of the material world are the three modes of material nature. 
้าแห่งโลกวัตถุคือสามระดับแห่งธรรมชาติวัตถุ The three modes of material nature are really the controllers. เพราะว่าเป็นผู้ควบคุมโลกวัตถุนี้โดยแท้จริง You are in the core of everyone's heart, where you remain completely aloof from the three modes of material nature. เราเนี่ยทรงสถิตที่คั่วหัวใจของทุกสิ่งมีชีวิตซึ่งเป็นสถานที่ที่เราเนี่ยทรงอยู่เหนือการสัมผัส And there's no doubt about it. ของสามระดับแห่งธรรมชาติวัตถุอย่างสมบูรณ์โดยไม่ต้องสงสัย Alright so we're going to stop here tonight วันนี้เราก็จะจบคำบรรยายไว้เพียงเท่านี้ก่อนนะคะ Okay are there any questions ถามไหมคะมีคำถามสามารถทำได้นะคะโน่เคว e ชั่นก็มา maybe Chinese devotee has จะตีมาตัวจีอันนี้ question from Chinese devotee No. Okay, Vishnu, Vishnu, we Madhuri and Shaya Madhuri, they raise her, they are here. Okay. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna, Vishnu. My humble obeisance is all glory to Sri La Prabhupada. Uh, actually, uh, th there was an incident when Krishna also left the gopis because they were feeling little bit proud. And uh, um, I was thinking, is it uh, for wrong to become proud of Krishna's association? Yes. Well, we uh, hear, we hear Krishna doesn't like his devotees to be proud. He prefers that we are humble. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So we should feel ourselves unworthy of Krishna's association. Right? We shouldn't think, yes, I'm qualified because I'm like so Krishna is with me because I'm I'm so great. No, we should think we're very unworthy, unqualified. That is the mood Krishna likes. He wants to to see that we're we're actually cultivating this mood of humility and uh, helpless. Mm. Insignificance in the eyes before Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So Krishna arranges to take away that pride, that feeling that we 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 could do anything, or we're, we're, that we're great or anything. He takes away that pride from us by arranging these situations. And by the way, speaking to Rukmini and how he dealt with the gopis, yes. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. that, when he takes away that feeling of pride, then it increases the the devotee becomes more helpless and more dependent on Krishna. Mm. เออวันมาตาจีก็ถามนะคะถึงคําถามว่าตอนกุชเนี่ยก็ทรงจากพวกกูปีไปด้วยเนื่องจากกูปีรู้สึกภูมิใจที่มีกุชเนด้วยไหมจากนี้คุณมาบอกว่าใช่นะเพราะว่าจากเมื่อใดก็แล้วแต่ที่เรามีความภูมิใจภาคภูมิใจหรือมีความแบบยิงแย่สูเนี่ยตอนนั้นเนี่ยกุชเนจะทรงทรงไม่ชอบอารมณ์นั้นอย่างแรงมาทั้งเมื่อใดก็แล้วแต่ที่เรามีอารมณ์นั้นเนี่ยพระองค์จะทรงออกห่างจากจากเราโดยโดยทันทีเพราะอารมณ์นี้เนี่ยมันไม่สามารถนำมาใช้ในการรับใช้พระองค์ได้เราควรรับใช้พระองค์ในในแนวความคิดที่ว่าเราเนี่ยไม่คู่ควรในการได้ทำการรับใช้นี้ของพระองค์
lagi. Hmm. Right. Um, Devotee want, but Krishna wants us to surrender to him. And remember, if, if, if our being unhappy makes Krishna happy, that should be our happiness. That is real love to Krishna. And so Krishna gets the greatest pleasure from seeing the pure love of his devotees. So that separation from Krishna, that being separate from Krishna, that increases the desire, the devotee shows its intense affection and desire to be with Krishna. We see Rukmini, just the thought of Krishna leaving her, she just, it was unbearable, she just fainted. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Guru Maharaj, just one more question. Um, we studied that uh, in the Vedic culture, there is no divorce. Suppose if a woman marries to a bad man, uh, we, and if uh, we have, maybe we can take it as our karma and uh, be satisfied with whatever situation we have got. But isn't it like we, uh, there is, uh, because we have to share uh, the karma of a bad man, then we are creating more karma for us or are we exhausting the karma? How to take that, Guru Maharaj? Uh, so, yeah. Pang tham pang maji na ha tham wa Tha kur wa nai kor ni kong praven na cha bong wa Sami palaya na me ni kaan ya kaan Ta wa nai kor ni thit samura Sami ya mak ma Kla wila palaya tong chai shi wit yu ka khao ne Ma cha tham hai karma nai suan thi Pet karma thi ya mak ma kong khao ne yeah, it's an interesting question. How to take this? Do you get an un, uh, a, a man who is not of very good qualities with a with a good woman? How should the woman behave? Well, the, yes, the, the, somehow the woman, by her karma, she gets a husband like that. So. Actually, Vedic culture was that she, she she should accept it. She should stay with the man. And Prabhupada tells about his own sister. He said his own sister was married to a man who was not of a good character. But somehow, because the, his, he was married to Prabhupada's sister, and Prabhupada's sister, she was from the Vaishnava family, you know, she was a pure vegetarian, but she married this man who was very, he had everything. And Somehow she saved, she stayed with the man and she served the man and gradually the man changed and he actually gave up his bad habits and became devoted to his wife. So if the wife is good, 
the, you know, it can change the man. Gradually the man can change, you know, he, he'll be, if, of course, the man, we hope, we hope the man will change. That, that, that's the Vedic culture, that, that if the wife is good and she's patient and tolerant, then gradually the man will change and he actually become a good husband and develop better qualities. So association is very important. So if the man gets a good association, if his wife is good, the man can be changed and become a nice man. Of course, the, the woman has to be very careful. Sometimes women are, you know, they're too pushy, you know, they're demanding and, and they get emotional and, and all these kind of things. It, it doesn't really help the man. And sometimes some women, you know, they're just so demanding, you know, they demand so much attention and so much time and sometimes it's just unbearable for the man. So it's, it's, it's a difficult situation, but there's no divorce. So, Prabhupada gave that example about his wife, how his wife changed her husband and he became a nice man. But if the man is just beyond change, if the woman is not able to tolerate, the woman shouldn't think to get married again. She should just accept it, that this was her karma. And she should just become a widow. Okay. You know, you may think women may think it's difficult to live with their husband, but it can be more difficult to be a widow. Mm. All right, so thank you, Vaishnavi. So, uh, Vishnu Priya, what is your question? Vishnu Priya, you have a question? Yes. Sorry, sorry, we we mute, but we don't have mute again. Okay, okay. But Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Lala Vapranam, please accept my humble obeisances or glory to Sila Bhagavan. Um, Ajana Happy, Ko Anuyat, Guru Maharaj, Tham, Nok Leung, Nid Nga Ha. Nang Jawa, Mi Kom Hai Ya Ha. เขาเหมือนกับว่าเขาถามเรื่องมาเหมือนกับว่าอยากจะบูชายามราชอะไรอย่างเงี้ยว่าบูชาเราได้อะไรทีนี้พี่ตอบคําถามไม่ได้พี
อะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะก็เลยอยากให้คุณมาสอธิบายเรื่องของอยามาราสที่เป็นมหาจารย์ให้ฟังหน่อยอะค่ะ Uh, yeah, this will be a little bit out of topic because they, you know, some of the Thai people that they want to worship Yamaraj. So as she knows, Yamaraj is also one of the twelve Mahajan. So is that okay to worship him? Could you explain on regarding that? Yamaraj is a demigod. We don't worship demigods. ยามาราชเนี่ยเป็นเป็นเทวดาฮะเราจะไม่ได้ไม่ได้บูชาเราเทวดา So you worship y a m a r a s h you go to y a m a r a s h ถ้าเราบูชายามาราชเนี่ยเราก็ต้องไปหายามาราช Maybe you become one of the Yamadutas ถ้าเราบูชาก็จะได้ไปเป็นผู้ช่วยยามาราชเป็นยามาดูตา You have to go and get the sinful people and bring them to y a m a r a s h เราไปหาเจอคนบาปแล้วก็พาเขาเนี่ยไปที่ยามาราช So tell them to read about Yamaraj in the sixth canto. What Lord Yamaraj says in the sixth canto. แล้วก็ให้เขาอ่านสิมาบอกตามภาคกก็ได้ค่ะที่นั่นเนี่ยจะมีบรบรรยายเกี่ยวกับยามาราชอยู่ And then the story of Ajamil is there, the Ajamila story. How the Yamadudas came to get Ajamila to take him to Yamaraj. Okay. Okay. Yogi Rishal has a question. Uh, Guru Tev, I just want to ask, uh, Lakshmi Devi really wants to have Lord, uh, be with Lord Krishna again and again, but uh, in this past time, it was Lord Krishna who has her husband. So, does she really want to be uh, as she tried to go to Vrindavan, but she couldn't? So, is she longing for? Krishna and Vrindavan, or she wants to just come back and uh, have Krishna as a husband. Means Narayan as a husband. Which one of the two is she really longing for? I don't know. You have to ask her. <laughs> okay. You know, I just can't. I only know what our scriptures tell us. I'm not reading between the lines. y o u r e Talking about something else, I don't know. You bring up this thing and something else, you know. You know, we're, we're just hearing about Krishna enjoying his pastimes with his wives, and one his wife said, "God is his fortune." Mm. Well, because I read that line about uh, you know, Lakshmi Devi wanting. To have Lord Krishna, so I was wondering, if he has him as a husband, and or is it the one in Vrindavan, or is it, uh, again Lord Krishna down here? That's why I ask for it. Why is there a difference? It's Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna and Vrindavan is the same as Lord Krishna and Dwarka. Right, Lakshmi. Is the husband of Krishna in Dwarka? In Vrindavan, Krishna doesn't have any queens. And mm. he comes to Dwarka and he's married, and Lakshmi is there with him as his wife. Mm. She was. Uh, she went. It, it said Lakshmi went to Vrindavan to do a s t e p because she wanted to try to get to Rasa Lila to get into Rasa Lila, but she could, she was told she couldn't do it. She'd never get into Rasa Lila, so she gave that up. 
Instead, she was given residence on the chest of the Lord. It's a golden line on the chest of the Lord. So that when Krishna left Vrindavan, then he came to Dwarka. And then the goddess of fortune comes as his wife. Oh, so there's no more hankering as such anymore, right? Because now she's with him. Yeah. Okay, just that part I didn't understand very well, Gurdjie. Thank you. Okay, um, are there any questions from the Chinese devotees? <laughs> Yes. 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 而朱娜按照Krishna的这个意愿表现出对自我利益的无知,那么人真正的自我利益在于Vishnu-Krishna,他想知道这个真正的自我利益在于Vishnu-Krishna怎么理解。Oh, you can ask Jalangi this question. You should ask Jalangi this question. She's going to teach the Bhagavad Gita. She's asking a question from Archana. She's asking a question yes. from the Bhagavad Gita. She wants to understand something that which is said in the Bhagavad Gita. So, you know, I don't want to get into, you know, I have to get out my Bhagavad Gita. I have to find the verse and the section and then difficult for, difficult for me to translate it all. Okay. เป็นคําถามจากปกติตานะคะก็ให้ให้เขาไปถามในส่วนของปกติตาครับมาจะจริงเบื้องหลังที่เกวันที่ชื่อเชวันสัตติเชวันจีเกวันที่ฮะแล
go home defeated. Either they will win the battle or they will die on the battlefield. So that is courage. All right. Do you learn to win tea? Ranroa Oh, uh, fe uh, fe feeble. Huh? Fearful? Faithful? Fe fe feeble. Feeble. Yeah. Feeble. Run, draw. Feeble. Feeble. Weakness? Mm, yeah, like that. Feeble. Uh, okay. Tashang Chidao Shem Tadawenti Shishama Shema Sha Ranro. Well, one thing is we have to surrender to Krishna. It's not a weakness. Rukmini appears feeble just because of the thought of losing Krishna is a great concern for her. Rukmini So she's and she's a woman. So a woman's nature in front of her husband, a woman doesn't want to be superior to the husband. The woman should be subordinate to the husband. So she appears to be feeble in the presence of her husband. <laughs> Uh, so being feeble, that yeah, woman should be like that, uh, should appear like that. You know, a man doesn't want to have a strong woman over him, pushing him and telling him what to do. A woman should be gentle. <laughs> A man likes to think that he can take care of his wife. If the wife's always playing, being superior and strong, and then it's not so pleasing to the husband. The man likes to see that the woman is depending on him. Okay, so we will stop here tonight. Okay, Raja. Uh, I have a question. Is Chaitanya Rupa Mother's 
，多巴就一并参与，安排好一切了，是这样吗？在你那边，就是在和奉献者联谊的时候，就我们和奉献者联谊的时候，奎什达是不是一定会参与安排所有的这些联谊的事情 ？Does Krishna arrange all the Things which happen when the devotees come together to associate is it all arranged by Krishna? Uh, well, yeah. If you're all pure devotees, if you're all pure devotees and completely surrendered to Krishna, <coughs> then Krishna may arrange. <coughs> But. Devotees, pure devotees, they don't like to take service from Krishna. They like to give service to Krishna. Yeah, we like to bring people. We like to do things. We like to give service to Krishna. We don't want Krishna serving us. We want to give service to Krishna. We arrange association. We arrange programs to give service to Krishna, not to take service from Krishna. Well, we have programs. We have to give service to Krishna, not to take service from Krishna. We have to give service to Krishna, not to take service from Okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So we're going okay. to. Okay. No more. We'll stop here tonight. So thank you, everyone. Thank Archana. Thank Chinese translation. Thank all the devotees. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gorbak Gorbak Kibrinda Ki Jai.